Shalawam, Thawada, Yahweh Bashma, Washai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men, that being the apostles and bishops of Grey Millstone, who are amongst the men worthy of double honors. And Yahweh Bashma, Washai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel. So today I want to um, speak on the high rate, the high level of immorality in this man's society. And uh, this man I'm referring to, the so-called white man, also known as the man of sin, according to, um, what's that, let's get it real quick. According to this here in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I believe the point is in verse 3. And uh, this was a letter, an, an epistle by the Apostle Paul to the Israelites that were living in Thessaloniki, also known as Thessalonia, which is in Greece. Okay, and it's dealing with, as you see here in the subheading, um, the man of lawlessness, which is the so-called white man. Okay, this is Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 3. It says... Let no man deceive you by any means. So we as the hopeful elect of Israel are not to be deceived by any means. Right? It says, For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. What day? The day is speaking about the day of our Lord. Okay? The day of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And the day of his only begotten son, our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, in which the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is going to visit this world via his son, Yahweh Shai, with a multitude, as is written in Psalms 68 and verse 17, thousands upon thousands of holy angels in what people out there call UFOs. And that day is going to be a dreadful and horrific day. But it's going to be... Um, a day of salvation unto the elect of Israel. Okay, as is written in Matthew 24 and verse 31. He shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth in that day. Okay, and our Lord is going to deliver the elect of Israel from the destruction he's going to bring on that day when World War Three heats up to a nuclear level and when nuclear missiles are being shot throughout the globe, throughout the earth especially targeting America. So that's going to be a horrific day. However, as is written here, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And this is referring to when our people, the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of these so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, um, you know, when we fell away from this truth, this wisdom, knowledge and understanding of who we are and the Holy Bible, in which that ordeal... Uh, primarily started and took place between the years of 66 to 70 AD, okay, up until the time of hardcore slavery, you know, when we were brought over here to, to the Americas against our will to serve our enemy, Esau, Edom, on cargo slave ships, up until this very day, okay, we fell away from this truth, we discontinued, as is written, in Jeremiah 17 and verse 4, we discontinued from our heritage. It says, and that man of sin, again, referring to the man that I spoke about earlier, which is the so-called white man, who is also known as the man of sin. And what sin? According to 1 John 3 and verse 4, sin is the transgression of the laws. What laws? The laws of our heavenly father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that are recorded in this Bible, okay, that were given unto our forefathers, such as Moses, Marsha, to give unto us, the Israelites. And this so-called white man has broken every law in the Bible, okay? And uh, this is why he's known as the man of sin. And this is why, collectively, these people, the Edomites, are known as um, the borders of wickedness, Okay? pursuant to what our Lord said through the mouth of Malachi when you go to Malachi 1 and verse 4 and uh, these people are in rulership right now so we're living in a sinful kingdom and what did our Lord say about 
the sinful kingdom when you go to Amos 9 and verse 8. Um, the Lord said, his eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. Okay, now the modern day sinful kingdom comes in the form of America, which is Babylon the Great. And we live in a very uh, sinful world. A world where homosexuality, transgenderism, idolatry, adultery, women's liberation is promoted throughout the earth via this so-called white man, okay? And what he puts in his media, um, you know, what he puts in his school system, indoctrinating the children, so on and so forth. And again, this is why it's written in Amos 9 and verse 8, that the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, in which the eyes are referring to the holy angels, which are making their appearances right now throughout the earth and what people out there call UFOs alongside the eyes of the Lord's men, his servants, the prophets, okay? And the Lord is going to destroy this world, destroy this current society via World War Three, the nuclear missiles and the visitation of Yahweh Shai with the holy angels, okay? And uh, this man is going to be at the forefront of that destruction. Hence, Isaiah 34 and verse 5. The sword of the Lord shall be bathed in heaven and shall come down upon Idumia, which Idumia is Greek for Edom, the Edomites. Okay, and that, that sword is speaking about those nuclear missiles, which is set to destroy you Edomites and the wicked of our people over here in America. Hence, Zechariah 13 and verse 8. Anyway, it says that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin which is Esau Edom the so-called white man these Edomites these so-called white people be revealed and they're being revealed right now okay the son of perdition and our Lord is revealing them through the mouth of his prophets i.e. the apostles, the bishops, the elders, and the men of great millstone, and like-minded righteous Israelite men, okay, that have been set up to reveal this man, the man of sin, Esau, Edom, the so-called white people. And an example of this man's uh, sins is what we see here in the news, in the headlines, okay? It says, huge numbers of teenagers being taught about BDSM and how women can have penises, okay, which is what transgenderism, which is against the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, as a matter of fact, I'll get that in a minute. It says over half in the UK know someone who is or wants to be a transgender, okay, which, like I said, to be a homosexual or transgender is against the laws of our Lord. Let's get that. In Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5, it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord, Yahweh, thy God. Okay? So this is the law on transgenderism, if you will. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5, which the so-called white man has violated this law. Let's go to another one, Leviticus 20 and verse 13. It says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, which is a filthy, disgusting act, in the sight of our Lord. So when you have a man having sex with another man or you have a woman having sexual relations with another woman, that's what you call an abomination, okay? A filthy, disgusting act. It says, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them, in which Esau, the so-called white man, doesn't uh, uphold this law, okay? He doesn't carry this law out in his uh, government, in this society. 
And this is just another reason why the Lord is about to destroy this man and remove this man out of power. Okay? Because of uh, what he promotes. And this is, you know, this is sickening. You know, this, this whole BDSM thing, this is sickening. As a matter of fact, let's find out what BDSM stands for. It says it down here. I believe it's bondage. Yep right here bondage discipline sadism and misogynism or misogynism which sadism let's look up this word sadism um let's go to google for that let's type in um etymology sadism it says love of cruelty especially as evidence of a subconscious lust that the cruelty satisfies okay and i believe it goes back to this individual count donitian yeah let me let me just read on it says not a marquee though usually now called one he was notorious for the cruel sexual practices described in his novels. All right, so this word sadism, if I'm not mistaken, goes back to this individual um, Count Donitian. So let's look him up and see what he's all about. Um, just give me one second here. Marquis de Sade, and as you can see, he appears to be what you would call today a white man, in which these people are actually Edomites, the children of Esau, Edom. It says, Denitian Alfonso Francois Marquis de Sade was a French nobleman revolutionary politician philosopher and writer famous for his literary depictions of libertine sexuality as well as numerous accusations of sex crimes <laughs> so who did, this is who this man was all right a so-called french nobleman and what does it say when we go to isaiah 32 and i believe that's verse 5 let's get that real quick Isaiah 32 and verse 5 it says the vile person shall no more or pardon me shall be no more called liberal nor the child said to be bountiful so the vile person is who Esau Edom the Edomites all right they shall be no more called liberal another word for liberal is noble okay so let's go back to uh marquis de Sade, it says was a french nobleman revolutionary politician philosopher and writer famous for his literary depictions of a, of a libertine sexuality as well as numerous accusations of sex crimes his works include novels short stories plays dialogues and polit political and political tracts in his lifetime some of these were published under his own name while others which sad all right so reading on it says sad or marquis de sad is best known for his erotic works which combined Philosophical discourse with pornography depicting sex, sexual fantasies with an emphasis on violence, suffering, anal sex, which again is against the laws pursuant to Leviticus 20 and verse 13, 
which he called sodomy, in which we know that sodomy goes back to where? Sodom and Gomorrah, in which our Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities for their vile acts, all right, such as what we're reading here, anal sex. And you can read about that destruction when you go to Genesis 19. And this is why the Lord is going to bring this destruction all over again, man. Okay, fire from the heavens in the form of nuclear missiles this time. It says child rape. So this is what this guy was writing about and promoting crime and blasphemy against Christianity. <laughs> Again, this is why these, these people, right? And this man, the so-called white man, is known as the man of sin. Okay. Which this is, this is disgusting, you know, this is real disgusting. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, this individual, he's um, the man behind that movie, Silo. Okay, yep, as you see here, a part of one of his notable works is this book, The 120 Days of Sodom, okay, which was turned into a movie, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, as you see here, Salo or Salo, also known as the 120 Days of Sodom. And this movie is the most vile, horrific movie you can ever watch in your life, all right? Do the research on it. Um, let's see what it says. The film focuses on four wealthy, corrupt Italian libertines, which that would be a modern day um, politicians, the ruling class elite, if you will. All right. The Rothschilds would be involved in that. The Rockefellers would be involved in that. This is where you get your Jeffrey Epstein's and your Bill Gates from. OK, it says the film focuses on four wealthy, corrupt Italian libertines in a time of the fascist Republic of Salo from 1943 to 1945. The libertines kidnap 18 teenagers and subject them to four months of extreme violence, sadism and sexual and psychological torture. Okay, so this is what this movie and uh, this book is all about. And this is what this man, um, Marquis de Sade, was all about. In which BDSM or BDSM bondage, um, what was it? Bondage, discipline, sadism, and masochism is all about. Okay? It's all about this wickedness, man. Anyway. You know, I'm not going to read further on in this article. What I will do, Lord willing, is remember to leave the link to this article in the box below. But as you can see, this is what they're promoting. And they're conditioning the children to have this mind state in their schools, man. All right. Which is pure wickedness. Anyway, um, I guess I'll end it with what we read in 2 Thessalonians 2. Let me just run through this real quick. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, which again, we're living in that time right now. The son of perdition, referring to the so-called wear man, because they're about to be destroyed. Okay? Their whole empire is about to be destroyed. It says... Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worshipped, so that he as the Most High God sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is God or the Most High. And that's exactly what this so-called white man has done. Again, hence, Job 9 verse 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Okay, and this is what this so-called white man has done through his renaissance art. Putting himself up as the most high. It says, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Yeah, the Apostle Paul 
and the rest of the apostles told us these things in the days of old, all right? Hence, Romans 15 and verse 4, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, the learning of the hopeful elect of Israel, okay? It says, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, and we're living in his time right now, the so-called white man is ruling, you know, the Lord has given this man um, a little season, as is written in Revelation 20, and I believe that's verse 4, if I'm not mistaken, or verse 3. He shall be let loose, uh, and he shall go out to deceive the nations for a little season. We're living in that little season right now. The so-called white man has been ruling this world for the past, let's say, 500 years or more. And we're coming to the end of his little season, the end of his world. Hence, Matthew 24 and verse 3, 2 Ezra 6 and verse 9. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It goes on to say, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Yeah, because, you know, I guess he was ruling back when the Apostle Paul was writing this. The so-called white man, Esau, Edom, okay? through their Roman government, right? And it was a mystery who these Edomites were back then. But the Apostle Paul knew, okay? And we know today, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem al as is written in Amos 3 and verse 7, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. It says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now will let, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And right now our Lord is letting and allowing this so-called white man to rule, okay, for the sake of prophecy. And as is written in um, Psalms 75 and verse 6, if I'm not mistaken, the Lord putteth down one and setteth up another. Well, guess what? Our Lord has set up this so-called white man to rule this world. In wickedness, as it's written in Job 9 verse 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked being Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 and verse 4. And he's about to be taken out of the way, okay, via our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, upon his return. Verse 8, we'll end it here. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Referring to the servants, the prophets that you see out there on the highways and byways, out there on the street corners. Okay. I.e. the apostles, the bishops, the elders, and the men of great millstone. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And again, that's referring to when our Lord comes back with the thousands upon thousands of angels. Okay. To destroy this white man's uh, kingdom. Or the so-called white man's kingdom. Okay. In the midst of World War Three, And those nuclear missiles being shot and launched. Okay. Upon his stronghold, which is America. Also known as Mystery Babylon the Great. So I pray and hope that you brothers and sisters out there were edified. And Lord willing, I'll catch you again soon in another lesson. Shalom. We are